Hello, everyone. With Jerry Snodgrass, I'm Brady Roberts. We're set for a big matchup in girls' soccer in the Western Buckeye League here in Glandorf as the host Titans take on the Shawnee Indians. A couple of unbeaten teams in the WBL here, Jerry. It's going to be a big matchup tonight. You know, it should be a big matchup. You know, one of the things about the WBL, they have such great, uh, solid soccer teams, soccer programs, but they also have some solid, great coaches. Caroline O'Brien has been one of my favorites all along. And, you know, she brings a pretty young team in, mm-hmm. but at the same time, they've, they've gradually gotten better throughout the season in the things that she wants to get, they want to get better in. So I have a lot of respect for her, and I think, you know, this is a good matchup. This should be a great matchup tonight. Yeah, big uh, things on the line here. And let's talk a little bit about the visiting Indians of Shawnee. 7-0-3 and overall, 4-0-2 and in the WBL, getting some votes in the latest Ohio Scholastic Soccer Coaches Association state poll. Uh, Harper Bunky, one of, uh, actually, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong uh, player on my list here. Cameron Morris, top goal scorer with eight goals on the year, just a sophomore. Like you said, a lot of some young players kind of leading the way for this team. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. You know, she has some good returning young players back. And, but, you know, again, some new faces and everything, but they blend well together. And like you said, she has got to do a job tonight. And uh, added with uh, Alexis Hammond, six goals, two assists. Ella Mortz, six goals as well. Kind of those frontline players that are going to kind of lead the way. And they've always been, uh, Caroline has always been a possession type coach. And, you know, focusing so much on defense as well. And I think, that of all things, that's so necessary in this game tonight hey, for, talk, for them. You talk about possession game. Shawnee, one thing they've done extremely well this year, play defense along just five goals. Yes. And, and again, you know, go, you go to the other side with, you know, uh, OG and, and Emma Brinkman. You know, we've got two great keepers in the game. So, again, focus on the defense. And one thing that uh, Carolina Bryan has said is that, they can't get out of position. And when they don't have the ball, they have got to be disciplined to mark up on everybody. So we'll see how that goes tonight. And again, defense a big key for Shawnee. Let's talk a little bit about the uh, Titans of Ottawa Glandorf coming in 10, 1, and 2 overall, 6-0 in the WBL, ranked 6th in the latest Division Three poll. Kind of Seifker leading the way there, 12 goals, 5 assists. Yeah, you know what? I saw her earlier in the year. and She's, she's fast. She's solid. She never tires. And, you know, they've got to keep the ball away from her and keep, you know, her in check and do their best to not get behind her. And just a lot of frontline players, kind of a lot of players that could do a lot of damage. Bree Douglas, one of them, Mackenzie Recker, Mike Aldrich, a lot of different players that can score for this OG team. Yes, and I think the control of the midfield area is going to be such a key tonight. And that's something that I know that Shawnee wants to do is control it. Obviously, with the speed of OG, they do too. And you mentioned uh, the keeper for OG. We're talking about them. Emma Brinkman has done a solid job when she's been called on in the net. Yeah, 35 saves on the year. You know, hasn't had a goal allowed, or excuse me, one goal allowed, I believe, in the ten, last 10 games. So, uh, in fact, I don't think she's allowed a goal since the last time I saw her. So, uh, really, really a solid player. And she, she's tall she's athletic and again getting by her is a tough thing hey you talked about the goals allowed did you look at this nine goals allowed this year for og five of them come in one game and they lost five one to paris and that's one of the things i've said actually about both these teams but with og especially too you know you look at they started out with anthony wayne a premier team in the northern lakes league they played perrysburg that's the one where they gave up the goals they play a solid schedule a lot of respect uh, for the coach, for the coaches that do that. Uh, Michelle Mag is a great coach. Getting ready for this one. Again, a big matchup in the WBL. It's Shawnee and Ottawa Glandorf. We'll have it for you next year in WOSN. Randy Roberts, Jerry Snodgrass back with you here from Glandorf as we're getting close to the start of this big WBL girls soccer matchup. Shawnee and OG looking for first place in the WBL again in the conference. OG comes in at 6 0. Shawnee at 4 0 and 2. And for the winner, this is the type of game you'd like to have on your resume with a tournament draw that's very quickly approaching. Yeah, it sure is. And you know, it was looking at looking at this game, got a ton of experience on the one side, a youthful team on the other, but one that's really, really starting to play well. I want to tell you that our scoreboard tonight is presented by Charles River in Spencerville. 
The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. Just underway on our Charles River scoreboard. Ottawa Glanorf will be in the blue, Shawnee in the white. And we are battling at midfield here early on. This will be a big possession game. I think you're going to expect a ton of goals in this one. Yeah, yeah. but uh, yeah, I, I think, the, like I said, I think the midfield, the mid area is going to be so critical on who controls the ball, who plays good defense. Kenna Siefker with it in the corner. Get it out to midfield. It's going to come out. Nice job keeping the possession. Savannah Riker, big freshman, number 16, able to keep it. And now an early shot on goal. You know, the other thing, when Shawnee has opportunities tonight, they need to take advantage of them. I think, you know, the good defense by OG, I don't know how many chances they're going to get on goal. They have to take advantage of it. Nearly had one there, but the Shawnee defense will force the throw in. It comes into the corner. It's going to be stepped in front of, but OG will keep the possession. Seifker trying to in the corner once again. Trying to thread the needle. This one will come back out again to midfield. Possession momentarily stays with the Titans as their battle near the uh, sideline. Kenzie record number 14 for Ottawa Glandorf trying to fight for this one. Just want to bounce around, stay in. And once again, Shawnee trying to fight and they'll get a throw in. Shawnee's done a very good job right now of exactly what their goal was, is to mark up on everybody defensively and Claire Beach, number 12 for OG with this one momentarily. It comes back out and they'll send it back in for the Titans. Beach will lose possession near the sideline. It'll force Shawnee throw in. OG is so good on the cross, you know, and, and just they, they were so effective of that last time, you know, putting the ball right on the mark for people to score. The pass kind of bounced around and possession stays again with the Titans. Now the first real opportunity that Shawnee's had with possession of the ball. Ellen Mortz, number 22 for Shawnee, had it momentarily. There's one bouncing midfield, comes back. Cameron Reidenauer. And again, working that near sideline, quick throw in for the Titans. Get it into Mackenzie Recker. Not a whole lot to go on there. Ball's been controlled pretty much, you know, so far the first four minutes or so, all on OG's side. Shawnee's really just had kind of one, not even really an attack, just had right. one possession at midfield. It's been mostly, as Jerry said, it's been OG ball. Beach trying to go top of the box. Back out, trying to go inside. That one's going to be deflected off a defender. But well, what a great job by Shawnee, you know, marking up every time. And I think, again, I mean, I don't mean to speak for Coach O'Brien, but I think she knew that as quick and, and everything that OG has going for them, the experience, just play solid defense and we'll be in the game the whole way. Yeah, defenders for Shawnee are going to be kind of put a spotlight on. They've done a great job all year. Chloe, Chloe Cleves being one of them. There's a shot. Yep. And again, that's what they do so well. So well. I think that was Seifker that put that in, put that out from there. So played about four minutes, still no score in our Charles River scoreboard. Shawnee at midfield trying to set their offense. It's going to skip away and right back to the Titans. They go again with Claire Beach. You know, they'll set it inside, get a run for Aldrich. I'll go into that far side of the box. Comes the cross, and this one's going to be headed in, and it's going to hit the post. No goal, the official's on top of it, and a big save early for the Indians. It's a good veteran officiating crew tonight, too. They work the JV game, and of course, that's an issue all in its own right. There just are not enough officials. Although most most stands are usually full of them, but 
not tonight. These are two very, very good teams, very good programs, and very good schools. Big early chance. You never had problems in your coaching career with the paid officials, right? Not a bit. Not a bit. <laughs> Helped them all they needed. That's right. Or more, more like paid assistant coaches always thought they know more about your program than you did, right? Yep. You know, I did a podcast on that with the short, official shortage the other night, and something that I failed to mention is that how many coaches of a sport are starting to get their licenses in other sports. Oh, okay. And, and I think because I think they see and recognize the need so much that they're chipping mm -hmm. in and helping. And I'm really impressed by that. There's another long run set up in the middle, then we'll get the first goal of the night. And that all starts from that left side. A good cross, good position. And that's what OG, the Titans, are so good at. And yeah, McKenna Seifker able to put that yep. in. 34-18, opening goal of the night. So the Titans with a one nothing lead will take a break here in WOSN. Early goal now, one nothing. Ottawa Glandorf with the lead in our scoreboard, which again is brought to you by Charles River and Spencerville. Premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility, Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. one nothing Titans, great goal. As McKenna Seifker able to take a pass and deposit that in the back of the net. Lily Hazelman with the assist on that last goal. Early on, Titans on the attack again. There's Beach working this near side. Thread this pass right in the box, and it's going to be another goal for the Titans. So it looks like McKenna Seifker will get credit for the second one. Just a little bit of trouble there in the, in the middle. And that was a big thing for Shawnee going into this, that they wanted to keep it out of the box. They wanted to get keep the ball out of there. Both goals have come right from that area. So the Titans a 2-0 lead here, 33-34 left to go first half on our Charles River scoreboard. Not the start you wanted if you're a Shawnee fan. No, it's going to be very difficult for them to play from behind. It's another bouncing ball. This one kind of goes OG's way. They'll get a throw in. Kenzie Recker will do throw in and get this into the corner. She'll get it back. She'll be taking off the ball. Physical play. Getting into the box. Beach now with a header trying to keep this one in. There's a left-footed opportunity. That one's going to be knocked down. Nice save made by Chloe Nance. Shawnee recognized how how strong and how aggressive and how good OG is in the box, and that's why they wanted to keep it out of there so bad. Now for one of the rare times, at least in the first seven and a half minutes, we'll see Shawnee on the offensive end. What a good job. Physical play the defensive end for Ottawa Glandorf. Take that ball away. Shawnee a little bit out of sort. A couple players not quite sure where they were supposed to be. Now speed on display here for OG is Bree Douglas. They're running backward, get the takeaway. It's going to lead to a throw in here. Looks like we'll see the Titans with the throw in. Bree Douglas also, you know, mentioned her a minute ago. She's been so effective all year long. 24 goals on the season. She's been a key, key element of the OG team. Yeah, great job playing in the midfield right now. Titans had played defense the one time. Back on the attack. Here's one just chipped in up over the net. Lead to a goal kick. And again, too easy for them to get the ball in there. Yeah, just inches away from being 3 nothing here in the first 10 minutes. As we stand 2 nothing right now on the Charles River scoreboard. 
And we had another one that was off the post. So, you know, it's OG is the Titans have certainly had their scoring opportunities. Speaking of scoring opportunities, one here off the corner kick. This will be the first one of the night. Bree Douglas taking the corner kick and watch where she puts this. She's, she's so good at this. Able to get this one high in the air. That one's going to bounce around a little bit. Looks like an attempted bicycle kick. It is going to come out. Possession is going to go to Shawnee. Try to run to the near side, but a nice job getting back. Knocking that out of bound was uh, Megan Horstman. Get the throw in here for Shawnee. She took it away from Ella Mortz. Speaking of takeaways, another one right there is Mackenzie Record, number 14 for the Titans. Get it back out to Beach and runs the attack. Head to Seifker. Seifker's got both goals, and she'll have it taken away from her. As a Shawnee defense showing up that time. Still can't clear it, though. Megan Horseman playing such good defense. She has such great speed, great defensive instincts. Well, flip the uh, side of the field, go to the far side for Carson Erford. And it looks like this one out of play. Looks like we'll have some substitutions. Yeah, quite a few, in. I think. Goal kick, this one. Nice header is going to keep this one in on the offensive end for the Titans. And it's knocked away. It's going to lead to a throw in. And there's one out of play. And it looks like we're going to see another goal kick here. Actually, a beautiful evening here tonight. It's cooled down a lot, of course. It's been cool all week, but sun came out. It's been a nice evening. Nancy will step up, come up with a save. We just we lost summer very quickly, Jerry. What did we ever? 80 to 55 in a hurry. Yes. Like like a cop was waiting. I think the one night we had a temperature drop of like 50 degrees from the high of one day to the low of the next. And I'm not ready. I'm not either. But by and large, you know, um, high schools have had good weather, not only for Friday night football, but mm -hmm. for the most part, most other games. Midfield takeaway for the Titans going back on offense. Off the throw in. Addison Neff, number 14 for Shawnee, trying to corral that one. Now this goes back in deep and looks like out of play. You know, it's difficult for Shawnee. You know, one of their goals is to, on the defensive end, is not overcommit, don't overrun, don't, you know, stay in position. And it's just so hard to do. You take your angles and everything, but OG has so much speed. Well, back up and try this again. Getting him right where they wanted in the middle of the field. It was Aldrich on the attack again. Back up and reset. Now to Beach, this one gonna bounce up off her a foot, but she's able to control this one, trying to win it. One of those top defenders for Shawnee, just a freshman, Bella Heil, number 34, able to take that one away. There's a bouncing ball, it's gonna stay alive for the Titans. They go down to the far side. Heil right there to make the play again. This one's going to deflect off her. Should lead to a corner kick. That's... Nope, I think they're going to give it a goal nope, kick. Nope, they're going to go goal yep. kick. Shawnee settled down a lot on the defensive end here in the last several minutes, I think. And I, I think it got so shell-shocked early on. 
Yeah, that's the big thing. Now you got to try to find a way to get a couple of goals, get back into this one. Goal kick goes out of play, so the Titans with the throw, and they have it once again. Staying on offense, a spin move by Beach, trying to get inside. A oh, little give and go, trying to get inside. This one's going to bounce right to Beach. Slip a little bit on the grass. I'll retry it. Shawnee's going to try to win this one. And we'll get the attack out to midfield. Trying to stay on side is Morris. It's number one. Try to little one on one. Now she'll lose this one. And this ball is going to come back to midfield. Shawnee defense playing there with Heil, but Beach able to feed this one back in. So not much of an attack for Shawnee before the ball goes right back over to OG. Siefker has got both goals trying to get this one inside. It's going to deflect around. Good defense that time by Shawnee. Titans trying to keep it. A little one-on-one -on -one battle that ends out of play. Mara Garlock trying to win that one for Shawnee. It's 24 and a half minutes to play opening half. Again, two nothing in our Charles River scoreboard. Back out to, trying to go near midfield. Shawnee trying to get possession here. Trying to come to the near sideline. Comes back out to midfield. It's like every time someone yeah, from that's... Shawnee with the ball, there's about three blue jerseys surrounding her. <laughs> Titans are just so aggressive. You know, they just, like you say, a perfect pass, and boy, they're there just there to take it. It's almost like you're playing 11 on 22. Right. Pass is going to go out of play, just to let a little too much. Trying to get Megan Carter down that near sideline. Ball coming to the near sideline. Nice job, but Clara Beach keep that in play. Get this one in. Two midfield kind of bounces around. Well, Shawnee defense tightening up a little bit. Now able to go on offense. So again, they'll go over to Morris. Going to the far side, trying to come inside the box, top of the 18-yard box. Just going to have the ball taken away from her. Comes free in a long attempt just to get something going on offense. And that's been about the deepest penetration they've had so far. For the first time this evening, Emma Brinkman's had to touch the ball for OG. But a good, a very good offensive sequence there for Shawnee. By far their best attack of the night. 17 and a half minutes in before they're able to do something. It tells you how strong this OG team has been. Shawnee able to take this one away, trying to create something, but that OG defense right there maintained possession. Good play at Madeline Hovist. Uh, Morris trying to save that one. And it looks like that's going to stay in play. Great job. This one poked away, though. OG with it once again. They'll go into that far corner. Trying to save that one in. There's a cross. Free ball through the net and another goal for the Titans. They're just so strong on that left side, too. All three goals, I think, have come from the left side. And Bree Douglas will get that one. So the Titans now, with a 3-0 lead, will take a break here at WOSN.
21 and a half minutes left to go in our Charles River scoreboard in this opening half. Now 3-0. Ottawa Glandorf with the lead. Bree Douglas. Great bouncing ball, Jerry, in front of the net, able to score. Yeah, and Clara Beach with a very nice assist on that as well. Titans nearly make this 4 nothing as they work top of the box. That one trying to thread its way through. Still kind of loose. And finally, a ball's going to be picked up by the Shawnee keeper. Nance, keep that one alive. It's Morris trying to win a free ball for Shawnees. Want to come back near midfield in the center circle. That one taken away by Carson Erford. Talk about winning those 50-50 balls and that strength right there. She, she was able to get that. Erford with it once again. And get into the corner. This one is going to be deflected out of play. It looks like we'll have a corner kick coming up here for the Titans. So Bree Douglas will do the kicking on the corner kick. This one loose front of the net. Still everyone fighting for it. OG didn't really get a shot on that one. This one's still loose. Finally maintained possession by Shawnee. Well, pushing and shoving, fighting for that one. Still fighting. Looks like Lily Hazelman will win it. Come inside. That one's going to be deflected away. Finally, Nance is able to come up with a save for the Indians. Shawnee trying to get going on offense and now down 3-0 here halfway through this opening half. The Charles River scoreboard. You know, and I mentioned it earlier that, you know, it's very difficult for Shawnee to play from behind, let alone three goals behind. So really going to have to change their attack a little bit, be a little bit more aggressive. But again, that defeats a little bit of their purpose, I think, of, you know, trying to stay back, keeping the ball in front of them. It kind of starts one goal at a time. They realize you're not going to get all three at once. Yeah, it's a tough thing to convince kids, I think. You know, that's probably one of the challenges of coaching is that the mental part of it, you know, that you're not going to get three goals on one, on one kick. A little keep away going on for the Titans now. Shawnee able to kind of win that one. So Bella Heil that knocks that one out of play. There's one. Body hits the ground. And it looks like we are going to get our first foul called. Get a free kick coming here for OG. I don't think there was a. I never saw the call on it. I think we called it, <laughs> and we were right, but I never saw the calls. I think they were going to go back and forth there a little bit. It's a good job on the uh, free kick. It's going to lead to Nance making the save. Right back goes OG on the attack. Inside, trying to stay on side as Beach looks like that one might have hit off her back. Hazelman trying to track that down in the corner where it's out of play. It'll be a throw in for the Titans. They'll wait for the substitution to come in. And once again, after the throw in, a ball knocked out of play. Good header off the throw in, and Shawnee 
trying to win the possession. Yes. Tama Jimai trying to win a battle here. She's all over the place. Yeah. Fight for the ball for Shawnee. Yeah, they, 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 Shawnee's become so, so much more aggressive, and I, they have to. They don't have any choice, really. Down 3 nothing here, 16 minutes to go, first half on our Charles River scoreboard. And now the officials will hold up plays. Shawnee will make substitution this time. Battle for the ball there will lead to another throw in. Long throw in on that far sideline. Oh, possession. Trying to get into the box. This one's going to be knocked back away. And now. Right there. They're right there. Midfield. Shawnee unable to keep the possession. Now they'll race back defensively. But Clara Beach able to take that one away. The left foot. Able to send that one in, but it's just to the right of the goal and out of play. Beach dangerous with that left foot. Dangerous and, and so strong, you know, stealing the ball, you know, on the intercept or 50-50 uh, ball that she takes. And just keeps the ball on the OGN then. It's Nance with the goal kick. One is deflected off an OG player. They'll get it back. Middle of the field. Back to Aldrich, trying to make something happen. There's a big blast. That one just to the left of the net. As the Titans continue to just pepper the net with goal. Yeah, they do. And that's, you know, as the fatigue sets in, you know, in the second half, that's going to be interesting, too. Although I shouldn't say that. Soccer players, they don't, they don't get fatigued. They just run. I tell you, Bree Douglas, I said that last time we were here. She's just a, she's just a machine. She never stops. Well, this Lady Titan team, this is pretty dangerous on offense. This one from the corner, and a nice save reaching out is Nance. As Mackenzie Riker nearly had her first goal of the night. Shawnee trying to control the ball, but they do it just momentarily. So here's Siefker with a couple of goals tonight, racing that near side, gets this one in. And once again, it's Nance who has got to make the sliding save. She put it right where she wanted to put it, and good save that time by Shawnee. Another long goal kick. This was going to take an extra bounce. Headed up near midfield. You know, I may have mentioned it earlier, but Chloe Nance, you know, on the goal, she's been effective. She's been very good all year long. And the ball ends up out of play, and we have a whistle. And what we have here. And once again, the ball comes into play, and ball just surrounded by OG defenders off the Shawnee throw in. And there's the takeaway. Back on the attack come the Titans. Seifker at a momentarily nice lead up from Mackenzie Recker. Recker's going to have this one taken away. Addison Neth. Good That's job that way. time by, by Neff. She did a very good job of getting in position. Neff still working hard. Well, give and go. There's Beach. She'll have that one taken away. Time Alexis Hammond's trying to come back on defense, do a little work. I'm sorry, that is eight, not six. So, uh, Lucia Pachon. Off. 
Ball knocked out of play. Shawnee COG with the throw in. Yep, throw in by Verhoff here. Mag Maggie, v Maggie Verhoff. It's like waiting for everyone to get position off the uh, substitution. Things you can do with a 3 nothing lead. Yes. Aldridge trying to run the offense. This one's set in the middle. Now they'll go outside the box, come back into that 18-yard box. Just kind of everyone chasing around the ball. Unbelievable work. Yep, and there it is with Bree Douglas again. Just going 90 mile an hour and never slows down. And we'll try once again. OG trying to find just a little bit of space coming again to the corner. Near the end line for Marissa Brown. This one deflected out of play. And it looks like we'll see another Titan corner kick. Corner kick on its way. This one's going to take an extra bounce. Nearly goes all the way through the box. That one's going to be deflected. And it's going to come out to midfield. Chased down by Madeline Hovest. Tighten, stay on the attack once again. Shawnee's really tightened up in the last 11 minutes, you know, of playing good defense. They've had to because the ball's been on that end the entire time. Neth will force the throw in. Great pass off the throw in, and this one come through and knocked away. Could have been disastrous if you're a Shawnee fan. Well, there's one into the bench. This one deflected out of play, and I believe should be a corner. Lead to kick, another yeah. corner coming here. So Hazelbin will do this one. Hazelbin step into this one. Nice strong kick, but goes right to Chloe Nance, who's able to make the save for Shawnee. Nine left on the save by Nance up front line. It's here for the Ali just one more ball game. Bouncing ball at midfield. Trying to be one again. It's Sievker with it as uh, OG wins this one. Yeah, it was a little, there was a good, good op or chance there that, you know, that's where Shawnee overcommitted a little bit too much, I think, without keeping the ball in front. You know, too much on the cross, but Titans very quickly will get another opportunity. This one will, looks like, head out of play. We'll see a throw in coming up here. As Horseman will do the throw in. Oops, change your mind. As we see a handful of substitutions made by both teams. Under eight minutes to go, opening half here. Three nothing in our Charles River scoreboard. OG will play this one near the box. And send it in. This one, a bouncing ball is deflected out of play. I believe it's pronounced Erford. Is how that shot went. I think if you don't do it right, you know, that's how it works. It looks like we'll see goal kick. And once again, is a bouncing ball. OG had won momentarily. Heil trying to win the possession. But the pass comes right back to the Titans. Feed this one inside. Here's Aldrich. Snake her way through. A handful of defenders into the box. Bouncing ball is deflected out of play. She was able to keep control of that through a ton of traffic in there. And it's going to be... I thought last touch by Shawnee. 
It will be a corner here. Everyone is lining up. 632 to go in the first half. 3 0 for OG and Link gets the score. See how Douglas plays this one. She's got one in front of Mackenzie Record and four players behind her. Titans with the corner. A laser effort. That one's going to come in and hit off the side of the goal. Turn around and we'll have a goal kick now. I think she tried to curl that in, you know, and it a little bit too much. Nance gets the goal kick. This one is going to bounce around at midfield where Titans going to dump it right back in and on the offensive attack. They go once again. Aldrich kind of running the attack. This one will come out and OG trying to make something happen again at midfield. Morris trying to take this one away. It's number one for Shawnee. And well, they win a free ball here. Have it momentarily, Aldrich once again. That was a good effort by Addison Neff, the freshman, to you know get initially to get that steal. Shawnee is able to come up with the ball. They don't have it for very long. He's trying to set up a pass top of the box. This one's going to bounce around. We'll come inside. Here's one. Stays in play. This one, a little tug of the jersey. The horseman able to win this one. Got it chipped in. This one is going to come all the way to the keeper. And Nance will have to make the save once again. So under five minutes to go in this opening half. All Titans. Possession easily been about 75, 25, maybe 80, 20. Yeah, I think closer to 80, 20. Shawnee trying to make something happen here. Pass comes near side to Adelaide. Stover trying to make something happen. This one goes into the corner. And now we'll have, looks like some more substitutions. The ball ends up out of play. Chloe Cleves ready for the throw in. We'll wait for the substitutions. And the free WOSN Scores app is the easiest way to follow local high school sports. No one covers more schools, more sports, more scores than WOSN. Search WOSN in the App Store or Android Play Store. I can tell you I have the WOSN app. Comes in handy every Friday night. Does it ever. <laughs> Long shot attempt there. And that's going to draw the uh, Bronx cheer from the Shawnee faithful to get the offensive attack. <laughs> Nothing worse than getting that tap on your shoulder. Hey, do you know what's going on? Here, I got the app. I'll, I'll let yep. you know. So nice job racing downfield for Seifker. Tried to win the ball. There's a cross through. Hayes has been trying to make something happen. She's surrounded a handful of white jerseys. This one's going to stay in place. Horseman will keep it in. No. Too far ahead. How's this one will end up out of play. Erford trying to win that one. But it's going to be taken off by... Shawnee defenders so will see another OG corner kick. They've been so left-handed, you know. This is one of the first corner kicks we've seen from this side of the field. Corner comes in, top of the box. One's going to be one, and that one will be lifted up and over the net out of play. Good thing they have the building there. It keeps the balls from hitting <laughs> a mile away. They have a really nice complex here. I think, you know, with the baseball, softball, really, really a nice complex. 
been a couple of years since I've been here. I think I've covered some tournament soccer here in the, uh, what I, the, I should say the new, not new, the top seed host rule. Correct. Not really new anymore. Ball out of play. Beach trying to win this one in the corner. So I heard the announcement just under a minute to go, opening half. And looks like we're going to have ourselves another corner kick. This one, a little bouncer in front. This one come all the way out of play. It looks like we'll see a throw in. Beach send this one in. That one's going to be deflected. Nance got a hand on it. Good job by Nance that time. So one more opportunity with 15 seconds to go on our Charles River scoreboard. So one more corner. High, Arky corner. This one will bounce around. And the goal's going to come with seven seconds to go in the half. Boy, she wanted so bad to get that corner kick in in those last 16 seconds. See what happens here. Trying to see who scores this one. So unofficially, now with, I guess can we say officially now that they've given the yes. announcement? Clara Beach, I believe, with the goal. We'll have to take a look at that one again. As all Shawnee will do is just run out the final few seconds. They're going to now the officials. They're going to come over. And they're going to tell them to put seven seconds back on the clock. Now we'll run off the final seven seconds. And I believe that will do it for the opening half. What a half, Jerry, wow, for the OG wow. Titans. Just, you know, they're relentless on that offensive end. Those corner kicks have just been tremendous for them. That was Clara Beach's 18th goal of the year. So it will be 4-0. Ottawa Glandorf with the lead at the half. We'll have the second half for you after this on WOSN. All Ottawa Glandorf through that opening half, four nothing. Titans have the lead over Shawnee with Jerry Snodgrass and Randy Roberts back for the second half. Just underway again, four nothing on our scoreboard tonight. Brought to you by Charles River and Spencerville, premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility. In Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. Well, Randy, we said it before, you know, that you don't get four goals, you know, on one shot. So, you know, peck away at it, try to get back at it one by one. Yeah, might nearly was five there. There's one that's going to hit off the uh, trees behind the net. Of course, Titans had a couple other opportunities. This one very easily could be five, maybe six, nothing. And we're going to have a quick quarter kick here. Well, you know, the first seven minutes in, you know, when they had two goals right away, and it just mm -hmm. put him in a bad spot right away. High arcing corner. This one nearly went past the net, and it looks like Nance is going to come up with the save. Had to avoid the uh, leg coming at her. Kind of directing traffic here. This is Shawnee got one goal at a time. She's got to have possession long enough to get an attack on goal. Not a lot offensively to speak of for the Indians tonight. Well, and you know, through a half a play, you just you have to attribute that to the speed and the strength, both of the Titans. Yeah, they've played outstanding both ends of the field. Here's an opportunity now 
Off the takeaway, Shawnee trying to get something going. Lots of blue jerseys in the middle of the field. Well, Mike Aldrich kind of directing traffic. This one that kind of bounces around. One of the rare times, ball didn't find the foot of an OG player, but in the back line, they'll play this right back up. Here come the Titans again. You know, the other thing too, the, the experience just shows so much on the field, I think too. And that's not a knock on Shawnee at, at all, but it's just, it, it's difficult when you've got that much experience on the field for the Lady Titans. Yeah, a lot of uh, winning experience at that. Right. Here is the big cross in, it's gonna finish. Great header for an early goal. Looks like Bree Douglas will get her second of the night. Claire Beach with another assist. Second time she's fed Clara Douglas. And now five nothing Titans here. 37-37 to play on our Charles River scoreboard. And there's one that's going to kind of roll up, hit off the knee of a Shawnee player. It's going to lead to an OG throw in. And Douglas still comes up with that ball. That's amazing. This one's going to try to go through the legs. Great job working that one. And Lily Hazelman. Working this one. Does come back over to Shawnee, at least momentarily. There's a bouncing ball when heads out of play. It's going to be a corner for the Titans. They've dominated that as well. There are no Shawnee corner kicks, and OG has 10. I'm not a mathematician, but I feel like that's a pretty big number. Most of it I've seen OG have this year is 7. 36, will work from the dark corner. Corner, that one will up and over. Hits out of play. Go right over to Shawnee, goal kick. That's a plus right there for the number of goals that have come off those corner kicks. Wait for substitutions to come in for the officials. We'll let everyone play on. Now, Shawnee will get an attack going here, Jim I. Trying to find something under this near sideline. Hazelman right on Jim I. Out, contact between the two. And it looks like we'll see a free kick coming up here for the Indians. Looks like the wall set up here for the Titans. So asking, you know, it looks like the official will give the uh, walk off for the 10 yards. So much easier than these are done on a football field. It sure is. Right exactly <laughs> where the 10 yards is. It's one that kind of bounces through. Or like the international, the they use the uh, the, the spray paint that oh, yeah. disappears yep. in the foam. That was introduced to us here a few years back, you know, too. But I think officials, okay, that's a little bit much. Had the little... The, the little belt, you had the, the, the canister, and you just kind of Just the sound doesn't matter. You can't yeah. see it, but just trust me. I'm a, so we went the cheap route and used shaving cream. <laughs> All works the same. Just, just took a while for it to dissolve. That's right. You needed a little rain the next day. Right. Ball out of play. Here's a Shawnee throw in at midfield. Trying to get a little bit of movement, and this one is going to be headed away by the Titans. Bouncing ball, one in the defensive backfield. Ella Mortz with that play. Should be a throw in Shawnee here, I think. Yep. 
next up for uh, Shawnee. They get Napoleon at home. Yeah, Mort's one of 11 freshmen on this roster for Shawnee. Yeah, and you know, again, they've come a long way throughout the year. Coach O'Brien said that they've really progressed well. They're still freshmen. That's the, and he playing in a game like this with so many senior dominated players. I'm sure that many freshmen, you're happy to be 7 0 oh, 3 at this point of the year. Yes. Good throw in. Coming up here for the Titans. They'll get this one in. Wrecker Beach down that side. Trying to get it out Beach with it. Trying to chip this one in. You know, the other thing I was glad to see is we had a full JV game tonight. It did. That's something that's, you know, kind of lacking a lot, I think, you know, in some of the you know, not not the small smaller schools, mid-range schools, but you know, just aren't enough kids. So you know, hopefully that we'll start to see the trend back up of full JV games. Contact. Not only, J I guess the JV on the same night is the big thing, because you'll have the, the JV. You see this a lot with baseball and softball now, where, hey, we can't play JV varsity the same night because we got 18, right. so we've got. So it's, it was good to see, yeah, full JV squads. Or if you're playing JV, maybe you're playing eight on eight. Yeah. I've seen some of that with soccer. Yep. And you know, uh, Soccer is one of the few sports uh, with the national rules process or the national rules that allow games to be played with under, starting a game with mm -hmm. under the full complement of players. And you look back, and I don't know 100%, but I think most of that was to promote the growth of soccer right. in its early days, which right. is a smart move. Yeah, you want as many players to play. You know, if you're sitting on a bench and you're not playing, you know, what, what's going to make you want to come out the next year? Right. So, yeah, anything to get people up off. And, uh, yeah, good entertaining game. A lot, of, a lot of folks here. A lot of them were here for that JV game. I, Randy, I've been involved through the last year with an organization called the Aspen Institute, and they have something called Project Play, and it really centers on, you know, it's not against travel sports or anything like that, but it's also addressing the fact that the cost of travel mm -hmm. sports is really eliminating an awful lot of kids at a young age. And every time I look, it's younger and younger. And that's true for all sports. Right. So and they're trying to make an impact, you know, because we talk about all the great benefits that sports offer, and they do. Oh, absolutely. To eliminate them for money reasons, ah, you know, that's, 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 that's dear to my heart. The ball is knocked away, but in the second opportunity, it's going to bleed to a goal. And Mackenzie Wrecker in the right place at the right time puts that one in. And it looks like that will get the running clock going here as Mackenzie Wrecker makes this one 6 0. Just at the right place at the right yeah. time. Wrong place, wrong time if you're Shawnee. You know, it could have gone either way. Couple people trying to get contact with that one with the free ball. So get the running clock going here at the six goal differential. And we'll begin to see some uh, fresh faces. Maybe some players who saw some action in that JV game getting in here as we get deeper into this one. Now substitutions continue in. The other thing that does, is nullify the fact that... Swings and someone trying to make contact. To Alan Mortz once again trying to win a ball for Shawnee. Mortz could have been all over the place. Yes, she has been. Little contact on that one. <laughs> yeah, another one, Tama Jimai. Another one that's been kind of fighting. Now there's another opportunity. And this one will head just left of the net. A good shot there, Bree Douglas. Trying to go for the hat trick. We'll see a goal kick coming up here for the Indians. You know, I've seen a lot of soccer players, but and I probably overemphasize it, but Bree Douglas is just a, she's, she's good. I, I just love the way she plays and, 
goes full go all the time, never stops, never seems to tire. She is involved in the latest scrum there. Now, drop back, Titans will on defense. Shawnee trying to get an attack going. Furthest they've had possession of the ball here the second half. Now back up to midfield. Run the attack again. Cross kind of bounces up. That one's going to be knocked away. Good play by the Titans. And they'll just run backward. Here's one's going to stay alive. Speaking of Douglas. Yeah. She's going to be knocked down from behind. And it looks like we will have the foul called. And she's right back up. You notice, though, you know, she didn't let that ball go out of bounds. You know, she's right after it. You know, I look forward to, to Shawnee in the years to come. I mean, again, Coach O'Brien's been there quite some time, and she's been through this with younger players before. But those players are going to be good. They're getting great experience mm -hmm. this year. Again, they're good. It's not, you know, we're not talking about a team that's owing something. You know, they have progressed so well for a young team. This will be a, a learning experience. That is for sure. We'll take this one. Still uh, quite a bit of soccer yet to be played. The tournament draws quickly approaching here as we get to the end of September. It's like I tell all my friends that aren't involved in sports. Tournament draws, it's like that's like getting three Super Bowls a year for me. Yes. That's a unique period of time. I you know, especially you know, a lot of people do not realize that Ohio is the uh, third, may, sometimes fourth, you know, depending on year to year, but largest athletic state in the nation. And, you know, it's rare that states allow all of their teams to participate in a tournament. And, in, of course, in Ohio, football is the only one where they do not. But, um, you know, still, it makes, makes for an interesting time of year. I'm, I'm for the Indiana prod. You know, go ahead and play that 10th game. Oh, but hey, we're going to call, the, we're gonna call yeah, it yeah, the playoff game. Yeah. The, the play in, the playoff play in. Playoff play in, yep. You know, win that last game, and then you make the playoffs. Yeah, that's unique. You know, it's, all those different scenarios have been talked about through the years, you know, and everything, but it's just so difficult in Ohio with so many teams mm -hmm. and so many, so many dominoes need to line up, and it's very difficult, you know, when you've got, uh, like, like the WBL with 10 teams in it, and it's just very difficult to... Oh, absolutely. You know, and you've got contracts with long-standing non-league people, and it's just very difficult to put all those pieces together, let alone the number of years in advance that you make contracts. There's a header that's going to bounce around. Yeah, I just thought, as a, a kid who grew up on the Ohio-Michigan border, it was, it was weird watching what you had to do my high school as a save is going to be made as Titans... I play a little bit of defense. Emma Brinkman, the second time she's had to handle the ball so far tonight. That you watch the Ohio schools kind of struggle. And I'm more familiar with the eight teams a region playoff. I know the, Correct. the years before me it was four, but I think the uh, the expansion to eight came while I was in high school. But then you go like five miles away in Michigan, team goes five and four, they're a playoff team. Yep. yep. That's exactly right. Oh, and we beat them 36 nothing to start the year. Oh, well, well now, painful. you know, now the way it is, you know, you've got three and seven and two and eights. And, you know, there was, you know, two teams that were 0 and 10 last year and one of them got in. And maybe they were one and nine after their last win, but the last game. But. It's, a, it's a different time we live in. Here's yeah, it is. Chased out. And I get it. You know, it's opportunities for kids. I mean, I think sometimes, too, you kind of forget the. The, the actual mental aspect of the game. Mm -hmm. Kids don't give up, but then again, if you're 0 and 9 or you're 0 and 10 or you're 1 and 9, you, you can see it in kids. I mean, yeah. you, you know what I mean? I, it, people don't want to admit it, mm -hmm. but I know as a coach, it's the hardest thing in the world to fight. Well, you're absolutely right. Yeah, I had uh, three high school football teams 0 and 10, 1 and 9. Five and five, right? And then zero and ten again. So. Yeah. Well, you know the other aspect too in soccer or whatever. Many times, especially if you've got an eight-team sectional or you know, something like that, you you often in that first game pit two teams the way it works out in draws that aren't very good mm -hmm. record-wise. Record-wise, so somebody gets a win out of it, you know. Yeah. 
Shawnee trying to keep control of this one. It hasn't been their night down 6 nothing. Working on offense. Tight send this one back in. Still some of their uh, offensive players in there. Beach trying to go top of the box. Sends this one in, but it's going to be deflected. That might be another corner kick coming here. You know, and overused, I realize, but there's been no quit right now in Shawnee. That's, and again, I know that's an overused statement, but truly, I mean, you see the aggressiveness just as it was before. There's the corner kick coming in from the spot. Might be tough to see. One spot the lights don't reach in the corner. Could be bounced back. Second opportunity up over everyone. Just a touch too much on that one. Yeah, that second opportunity I thought was going to go in. Everybody kind of fell asleep on it a little bit, thinking, ah, oh, you know, where's it going? Stoppage will allow the mass substitutions to come in. If you're talking about basketball sectionals, I was actually talking to an old, a former, I shouldn't say old coach, former coach of mine, talking about the, the good old days and the changes and he brought up the the six team sectionals where the two the top two were seated yep and then you had the shaker cup and that you you drew your oh yeah your opponent out of the shaker yep. cup drew, drew pills yep yep drew pills large part of my career was spent you know <laughs> well was it tough when you got you know had three really good teams in the tournament also makes uh, guys that i've made obviously made this a career but trying to, to determine, trying to, okay, I think this team's going here, and then you're like, well, it's all luck of the draw at that point. Nowadays with the seating, it's a little bit easier, and then you get some veteran coaches. You know there's certain coaches want to play certain games. Right. There's guys who will, if they, if they know there's a doubleheader, hey, I want to play the second game. Right. I want my guys to sit through a first game like it's a JV game like they're used to. I will play, you know, guys who will play the opening round. Well, you know, it's it's interesting you say that. And again, I'm talking regardless of sport here, but some areas of the state, a, taking a bye mm -hmm. is a taboo thing. You don't do it. Other places, if you don't do it, you're just like, what are you doing? You're risking a loss, you know? Mm -hmm. It's just funny to see that. I really saw that on a statewide level. Yeah, it's, yeah there's a lot of different uh, thought processes that, that kind of get played out, especially when... Uh, you know, like basketball, baseball, softball, soccer, volleyball, kind of uh, whatever one's doing. I don't, I don't want my kids sitting for 10 days. Right. I don't want this. I don't want that. I don't like playing here. I, I would play here because I don't like this gym. You know, the other thing about coaches in general, you know, you hear a little bit of it, but, you know, you've got 500 and some, 540, 50 soccer teams. Very few coaches play games with their seating. You hear that once in a while. In other words, they'll vote somebody that's good, terrible, mm -hmm. you know, so it'll benefit them. You don't see much of that. The one or two that you do see gets publicity, but you don't see it that often. That's a tribute to coaches in Ohio. Play to the box once again. This one will be deflected out by Shawnee. And I guess you'd be the guy to ask as someone that's uh, – had some high-ranking jobs in the state. Was that kind of the big concern with, uh, I guess, especially the Northwest District is, you know, some other areas that done this for a lot longer. Was that the big concern that, well, we don't know, like this, like we know Coach A doesn't get along with Coach B. Are we afraid? And like you said, the ones that do, and, and I know there were some all-district votes for yeah, players yeah. that kind of, oh, hey, we found out that. Well, let's, this team's 18-1, and one, but the, we found out Coach A voted them 13. Yeah, and you know, I this there was a scenario last year, I think we probably both know it, and, you know, in fairness, and I was glad to see that the athletic director in that school disciplined their coach for doing it. That mm -hmm. took, that took uh, some guts to do that, but it was the right thing to do, you know. So, uh, again, you know, with all the teams in Ohio, it, it's sports are in pretty good shape in Ohio. Another corner kick coming up here for the Titans. 19 minutes to play in our Charles River scoreboard. 6-0, trying to make it 7. Corner's going to go through the box. And momentarily, a player down trying to draw a call. Officials will let everyone play on. 
It's Riley Smith, number 11, trying to win that one for the Indians. And now this one sent deep into the night. You know, I'm a big fan of both the coaches here, Michelle Mag and uh, also Carolina Bryan. I, you know, I, I'm a big fan of theirs. I think they do, they, you know, they, they do a great job, not just winning games. You know, I mean, but anyhow, soccer coaches, hockey coaches, lacrosse coaches, um, they have, I might be missing somebody, but they have more training than most people in other sports. They have different levels of certification mm -hmm. that, they, that are not required by the state association or, or the Ode, Ohio Department of Ed. They, they have their own levels of training. And, yeah. and uh, it includes everything from mental health training to you name it. And, uh, of course, that's soon to happen in Ohio anyhow. But at the same time, what I'm saying is, you know, they're very, very well schooled uh, in how they're trained and how they treat kids. Yeah, hockey and soccer are the two biggest ones yes, for they me are. that come to mind. You're exactly right. Ho hockey with USA Hockey kind of right. stepping in, and, right. and, and soccer with the uh, the U.S. Soccer Federation yep. kind of wanting uh, the you know the pyramid and, yep, and everyone you're right. trying to. I know a little bit. Every yes, once you in a do. while, every you once in a while, do. every once in a while, you get one right. A good header. That one is going to be knocked away. I look at how far we've come with that training. You know, I was employed, you know, in Columbus at the time in 08 when there was no training required at all, period. Really? Yes, and when I was hired, I was put in charge of statewide coach education. Okay. And uh, it was a challenge, you know, because it was not required. And few people realize we have between probably about 70,000 coaches in Ohio certified. Uh, at least they're supposed to be. <laughs> My claim to fame, my coaching claim to fame, 2-0 and as an uncredited summer league basketball coach. Oh. I, uh, Make sure you friends, quit. Right? So quit. Friends, friends with the head coach at Delta at the time, Coach Bostadder, and his uh, 10 summer days were up. Calls me on a Sunday afternoon. They're playing in a summer camp. Listen, and he's going to follow the rules. Hey, my 10 days are up. Need an adult, JV coach is out of town, freshman coach doesn't want to do it, my kids want to play. Coach, what do I need to do? I'm going to give you a t-shirt, you just stand there. All right. I won two summer league games, beat Otsego and North Baltimore, and I walked off the court, and I'm 2-0, and oh, I am done. I'm going to retire as an undefeated basketball Hey, that just tells you that coaching is overrated. That's right. <laughs> yes, Randy, here's the deal, we're bringing 10 guys, they know when to sub. They play 10-minute quarters of the running clock. The five on the bench, know with five to go, they run in. Just stand there. And what do I have to do? He goes, just stand there. So I stood at the end of the bench, crossed my arms. Kid grabbed a rebound. I yelled, go. Yep. And they ran down the other end of the floor. Coaching is overrated. That's right. These kids coach themselves nowadays. Yep. Take away for that tight defense it continues on as Megan Horseman trying to create. Yeah, the Indians start a good run and then just the quickness, you know, of the Titans. Every player for Shawnee, when they get the ball at their feet, it just absolutely gets surrounded. Right. There has not been that opportunity for that big run or chance to, to break in the open field. Yeah, that's the thing. They just have not had any opportunities. But credit OG with that. I don't, I don't think the field is slanted, but for Shawnee, it kind of feels that way. Yes, it does. Kind of running uphill. It's been that kind of night. Like you said, with this young team, now the big thing is how do they bounce back from yeah, it? Yeah, I was just thinking that same thing, and that's where good coaching and Carolina Bryant, I, I believe that will do a good job of getting them back and, uh, you know, doing a good job next week or next game. Free ball top of the box. That one is going to be cleared out back to midfield. A little battle going on there. Now one of the few times. Good pass. Shawnee getting that free run. Riley Lamb, the upperclassman, the junior on this team, trying to track this down in the corner. Trying to win that one. It's going to be knocked away. We'll see a throw in. Now Shawnee will make, it looks like, a substitution. 14 minutes to go in our scoreboard tonight, brought to you again by Charles River in Spencerville. 
Premier Pharmaceutical and Chemical Research Facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. Long ball in, that one's gonna be knocked away. Shawnee trying to hold on to the possession. Defenders cheating up a little bit, but with that speed of OG, I don't know how far upfield you wanna go. Trying to get to that near side for Jemai. This one is gonna be knocked backwards. And it is Cameron Morris who'll have to run this one down. Come inside. High bouncing ball, that one is one. Erford kind of reaching out, making sure she wins that one. Back to midfield, and this might uh, turn into a possession game here this final 13 minutes. Trying another long run, this one is gonna be Tried to be cleared. Cleves kept it in play, and now we'll have one out. And we'll see a throw in, but first we'll have a substitution. This looks like Megan Horseman making her way to the bench. It's going to bounce off the foot at one, straight for the sideline and out of play. As Lauren Siefker couldn't control that one, so it'll lead to a Shawnee throw in. Shawnee trying to get a little. They're trying to get something <laughs> going on the offensive end. They've had a little bit more control of it here. Trying to direct a little traffic in the middle. There's a ball right through the middle. Again, about four blue jerseys of Ottawa Glandorf surrounding this one. Is Olivia Grothaus, number nine for OG. Had that one momentarily. Go back on the attack again. It's back to midfield and on the attack it goes once again. He's trying to dump one in for Jimai. Jimai. The uh, offensive threat for Shawnee is surrounded. Jimai three goals on the year to go along with five assists. Oh, and it kind of rolls its way to the net. Brinkman will have to make a save. Everyone trying to stay a little warm. That breeze has picked up. It's gotten a little chilly as the sun's gone down. Those of us in shorts may be regretting that decision <laughs> walking out to their car. Plus, you're those tough radio guys. Yeah. Right, even there, though, good job by Shawnee of controlling the ball, but there's always just somebody there for, for the Titans. It's an open run for OG. Delaney Dueling, a freshman, kind of working his, her, way, her way in through the box. That one's going to be poked away. Cameron Morris, you know, for, for, the, for Shawnee, she's been all over the field, too. She's done a great job tracking things down. And... One more. That one's going to be taken away. Morris is only a sophomore, but... I know Coach O'Brien has high hopes for her and has a lot of praise for her. Trying to come in top of the box. Spin, that one is going to be taken out. OG trying to stay on offense. They'll get it once again. Pass makes its way to that far side. Trying to drop it in, that one will be knocked away. Looks like OG is going to hang on here with just over nine to go. So they'll improve to 11, one and two, and again go to seven and zero in the WBL. You know, sometimes you look back when they played Perrysburg, they played Anthony Wayne, and 
you know, some of those, you know, obviously bigger schools are also very successful soccer soccer schools. But, you know, that, that's good. I mean, that's good. That, that puts you, you know, we have work to do, and especially when you can do it early in the season. Gives you a ton of momentum going into tournament when you look at, okay, we've improved from that. You know, it's really a, a good benchmark. You know, you don't like those types of games, you know, like two games before tournament starts. Kind of hits you a little bit. So they've really improved. Corner kick's going to bounce its way through the box. This one's still free. Looks like one Shawnee player might have hit that off the back of another. This one's still kind of loose for the Titans to control this one. Finally cleared out here with just over eight to play on our Charles River scoreboard. Shawnee trying to do what they can to get this downfield. Left-footed attempt. That one will make its way to Chloe Nance with uh, Dooling getting the opportunity there. Throw in coming here. Still working hard on that far side. Cleared out by Shawnees as rolling ball comes out to midfield. And they continue on as OG work the attack on that far side. Good job knocking that one away. Again, every loose ball seems to find its way yes. to the foot of someone in a blue jersey. Yeah. And, you know, again, I, I know I say this, but I can tell why Shawnee's had a good season. They're good. They're good. They just ran into a buzzsaw here, especially early on. Absolutely did. Deflated by a couple of goals seven minutes in. Shawnee trying to get this in on the attack. That one is going to be coming out here to the defensive third. Madeline Hovis to play this one for the Titans. That looks like a little dump and chase here for OG. Addison Neff over there again, you know, on that steal and you know, staying right with it. Ovis trying to win this battle once again. In one with Ellen Mortz. Oh, Mortz has left the field yet today. Yeah, and Mortz only a freshman. So again, you know, put it in perspective. They're going to be pretty good. Yeah, Mortz again, second on the team, and Shawnee with six goals on the year. And not the gaudy offensive numbers that uh, a Ottawa Glandorf team has, but. Again, they found ways to uh, not lose so far this year. Right. Looks like that will change here in about five and a half minutes. So closing in with five to go. And we will see. Dueling with the corner here. That one it hits the ground, comes out to Shawnee. You know, too, Shawnee has 20 freshmen and sophomores listed on the wow. roster. 20. Put that in perspective. And that was Jim I, one of those sophomores that carried the ball in for Shawnee. Your coach, something you want to see the next couple of years. Yes. So the way they're playing right now. One more throw in coming in. Looks like this one right back out of play. And we'll go back to Shawnee with it here. So Riley Smith with it right now, sends this one in that far side. One will head into 
the bench. See another throw in here as that clock continues to roll under four to go. So we'll just trade sides as this one ends up in the other bench. <laughs> Shawnee trying to set something up at midfield. Jemai with it once again, coming to that far side. We win this one, Roadhouse is gonna take that one away. Comes dumped right back in for Riley Smith. Smith will get it out to that far side, back to Smith. Smith coming in top of the box, and one's gonna be taken away. And right back towards the bench, we'll get another throw in here. And a good little run that time by Shawnee. They just couldn't, you know, couldn't get it. Again with those OG bodies right there. They're always there. And now OG will just dump one in here. Let everyone run to the other end of the field. It runs a little time off the clock. See a throw in. And one more opportunity. And Jimmy once again able to send this one in. Jimmy's going to solidify that spot in the middle of the field. Trying to run the offense for Shawnee. Yeah, we'll try it again. Hopefully get it down here. This time it is Cameron Reidenauer, number seven. Send this one in. And now one of the few times there might actually be more white jerseys than blue jerseys on offense. Still cleared out. Reidenauer with it once again, sends it to that far sideline. win a one-on-one -on -one battle here. Now turn and the shot with that one right towards the keeper. And Brinkman able to come up with a big save. Cleared down with no call. see a Shawnee throw in here as we near in on the final minute of this one. That was Ella Mortz that was down there previously and she's been all over the field. Like you said, I don't think she ever, she's ever come out. Yeah, there's gonna be some tired players for Shawnee. That is for sure after this one. Oh, oh. 40 seconds away. From OG moving to 7 0 in the WBL. Now we'll get a whistle here as Jim I trying to win a battle and a little pushing and shoving going on. One of the few times the officials have needed their whistles this evening. Yeah, we talk about that shortage, you know, again, of officials, but both officials worked a JV game before this, mm -hmm. a full JV game. and. You know, there was a period of time we were going with three officials as much as we could. You, no luck with that anymore. Yeah, that seems like it's just for the tournament. Final few seconds are going to run off. And that's going to do it here from Glandorf, where the home standing Ottawa Glandorf Titans, an impressive win this evening as they knock off Shawnee 6-0. It's a big win as... Look through this one. Siefker with a couple of goals. Beach a goal, a couple of assists. All in all, Jerry, good effort out of the Titans. It today. really was a good effort. And I will tell you, it was a good effort from Shawnee. I think those first two goals in the first, what, 14 minutes or so, just, just put them behind the eight ball. And they're not a team that can get, play from behind like that. Yeah, McKenna Siefker, a couple of goals the first, but six and a half minutes. Got them going and again on our Charles River scoreboard. 6-0 the final, so for Ottawa Glandorf again, they'll go to 11-1 and 2 on the year, 7-0 in the WBL. Shawnee loses for the first time this year, 7-1 and 3 overall.
four, one, and two in the WBL. So again, six nothing, the final. Good working with you. Good to see you again. It's great working with you, and and love the the WBL soccer. And uh, again, I know that Shawnee will bounce back, and OG has a very very good future in the tournament runs. Six nothing, the final again. OG gets the win. So for Jerry Snodgrass, I'm Randy Roberts. Thanks for watching, everyone.